Okay, this heli here is uh, originally a Warp 360, and uh, after a lot of modifications, uh, I've changed it into a more reliable, better flying machine. Uh, right now, I'll take off the canopy and I'll show you all the changes that I made to this uh, Warp 360. First of all, uh, from the beginning, from the start, I didn't particularly like the uh, original uh, landing struts. I didn't like the style. They looked kind of smallish. They didn't fit with the uh, style of the heli, so I made up my own uh, landing struts. First, I cut out uh, some plywood and I traced it onto some carbon fiber and cut out my own landing struts uh, with a Dremel tool. So with that done, um, I had to change the frame. The frame now, I've cut this out of a, <clears throat> with a Dremel tool as well. I had to lengthen the frame uh, from the front to the back here so that the landing struts uh, would fit. It won't fit with the original, uh, original frame. Now another thing I noticed, <clears throat> first thing I noticed with the with the kit, when I, after I put it together, I noticed that uh, it was tail heavy. So what I've done is um, I've moved the, the motor was originally at the back where, this, uh, where I put the uh, gyro now and I've uh, put the motor in the front which uh, gives a better balance. It gives uh, a little more weight in the front so it's not as uh, tail heavy anymore. And Now on the original model the motor having been installed in the rear of the heli uh, was putting a lot of load on the main shaft, especially on the uh, the lower bearing and as well the, the upper bearing as well because you had uh, load from the belt drive for the main gear and you had load from the belt on the uh, tail rotor drive pulling to the rear of the heli. Now because I have the motor in the front it balances out more so we have load pulling forward, we have uh, load pulling backwards uh, it's not exactly even, but uh, uh, a lot better than the original design. It just uh, makes these main bearings last a little bit longer. I didn't particularly like the uh, the original tail boom made out of, uh, it seems to be a real thin uh, aluminum. It seemed like I could probably even squeeze that with my fingers. It seemed pretty flimsy. So I wanted a better uh, carbon fiber tail boom. And there's a few choices. Um, <clears throat> the one I'm using is a... Um, off a Protus 500. Uh, it seems to work well. It's nice and light and strong. Uh, the other choices would be uh, this is off a uh, Chase 360. It's the same diameter, 17 millimeter. That would work as well. And the other choice would be uh, I have a tail boom from a uh, it's Hawk RC tail boom. Uh, this will work as well. Now, after I got all that done, um, I went to the tail. Uh, the tail, I'll just spin this around. Okay, so this is the tail. Um, the original tail grips were made out of this kind of this cheap, uh, flimsy plastic I didn't really particularly care for. So what I came up with is a, uh, this tail rotor is off a uh, Blade 450X. This is a micro heli uh, tail rotor that works uh, with this tail shaft which is 4 millimeter. Um, and that seems to be a lot more positive. It's, you know, it's aluminum alloy, so I think it's a little more rigid, and that works uh, really well. The uh, the tail case. Uh, this is a Hawk RC uh, side plates. Uh, it's just a lot more rigid. It has this spacer in here, uh, so it's a lot stronger, and it's reinforced. And I'm using uh, uh, ceramic hybrid bearings for the tail shaft. It's, they're a lot quieter and they seem to run a lot smoother than the original uh, bearings that came with the kit. The, the original bearings seem to be really poor quality. This is the original uh, rotary head that came with the kit that I particularly didn't like the design. Uh, some of the problems with this was the the main shaft where it uh, attaches onto the the main spindle is quite loose. I, I don't know if you can see the play there but it's it's just not a really tight fit. Uh, another problem I had with this uh, rotor head was the, the the bearings inside here appear to be you know really loose and uh, I found again a lot of um, a lot of uh, play in these bearings here and it just seemed to be really really sloppy I, I don't know I think this is just a really poor design 
Uh, to me, I don't know, this is just crap. Anyway, so what I did was, so now the uh, main uh, rotor setup I'm using now, I'm using the original uh, Warp 360 swash plate together with a Gowie X3 main rotor hub and also some Beagle Creations uh, alloy grips. Now the way this attaches onto the main shaft, there's no slop at all, there's no play, this is really rigid and also with the, the grips themselves, the setup they have uh, with the bearings and the, and the uh, feathering shaft here, I'm using a uh, Lynx uh, dampeners in here, the plastic dampeners, and this is like super rigid. There's absolutely no play in this setup like the original, which I didn't particularly like. This is a, in a lot better design. Okay, another problem I had with this heli was getting this canopy on. You got this canopy mount, and you have to try to fit it in this tiny little slot in the bottom, and it's kind of a pain in the ass, especially uh, uh, when you're ready to fly and the, and the heli's just sitting there. So what I do is I came up with my own design, and I'll show you uh, exactly how I made this. It just makes it a lot faster, a lot easier. So what I did was I uh, made up my own carbon fiber bottom plate, and in place of this uh, original mount here, it's it's a bit wider. I made it wider in the bottom here, so the canopy uh, fits a lot easier. I don't use that little plastic spacer clip anymore. This just slides on really fast, and it just fits underneath the heli. There's no fiddling around trying to get that little mount in the plastic. It's just a lot faster, a lot easier. And that works quite well.